Hello, this is Grace Baker presenting my demonstration lesson. I chose to do my demonstration lesson on the order of operations and how I would introduce this subject to the sixth grade math class. Always want to start my class with an agenda just so that everybody knows where we're going, what we're doing for the day. There's no confusion. We can be goal oriented and not have any downtime in between activities to really maximize every moment of the precious class time that we have together. I'm going to start out with the standards. This is not something I would necessarily tell the students, definitely have displayed, know for myself what we're doing, what my goal in teaching is, and what standard we're trying to reach. Secondly, I'm going to go over the goals. This is definitely something I would share with the students so that they know for themselves what they should be able to do by the end of the lesson. Make sure that they are focused on the goals and ensuring that by the end of the lesson, they are on the same track. Next, I'm going to introduce order of operations, explain why it's important. We'll go over some examples. And then finally, I'll do check for understanding in the form of practice problems. So the standards, the standard is MA.5.A.6.2. Students will look for parentheses first, exponents second, multiplication and division from left to right third, and addition and subtraction from left to right fourth in order to simplify expressions. Students will simplify expressions that may include exponents or parentheses. The content limits. Items will include no more than five whole numbers, including exponents within the expression. Numbers raised to a power must be single digit numbers. Exponents may not be applied to the entire quantity within parentheses. Exponents used on numbers must either be a two or a three. And lastly, division will not be shown as a fraction. Moving on to the goals, students, as we go through this lesson, our goals are to identify parts of an equation using parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. You should also be able to simplify complex expressions and finally understand the importance of order of operations and what it is. So, what is the order of operations? It is the order in which we simplify a complex expression. So here we have our complex expression, three plus four times two minus four. So how would we go about simplifying this? One first thought may be by going from left to right. So let's go with three plus four is seven. Then seven times two, again, moving from left to right is 14. Finally, 14 minus four is 10. All right. As always, we should double check our work. So let's go ahead and double check our work. Maybe this time we'll start at the right and move to the left. So two minus four is negative two. Negative two times four is negative eight. And then finally, negative eight plus three is negative five. So this is weird, right? We just did the same expression and we got two different answers. Let's go ahead one more time just to be safe. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. And this time, let's start with the easier stuff. Let's do the subtraction and addition first. So let's do three minus four is negative one. Then maybe we'll do the stuff inside the parentheses. The multiplication seems like it goes together so let's do four times two is eight and then finally let's add those two things together and we get seven so this is really weird right this is not ideal we just did the same equation and we got three different answers this shows us why the order of operations is important it makes sure that everybody gets the same answer so how does it do that Let's return to our definition. It is the order in which we simplify a complex expression. The key word here is order. So elaborating on that, it's a set of rules to make sure that everyone follows the same steps, the same order, and gets the same answer. 
So what is our order of operation? What is our set of rules that we should follow? It is PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. PEMDAS stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. This is our order, our order of operations. It tells us the sequence to follow. When we're performing our operations, when we're solving a complex expression, simplifying it, what order we take. So this tells us, PEMDAS tells us, that we should start with parentheses, always. No matter where it is in the equation, first, middle, last, we should start with whatever's inside parentheses. After we solve what's inside parentheses, we can move to exponents then multiplication or division, and then finally addition or subtraction. So let's return to our original expression. And now we know using PEMDAS that the P parentheses should be done first. So let's go ahead and substitute four times two is what? It is eight, so let's substitute eight into where the parentheses should go. So three plus eight minus four is our new expression. And what is next? Next is exponents. We don't have any exponents here. After that is multiplication, no multiplication or division. And then lastly, addition and subtraction is all that we're left with. So we'll do our addition and subtraction left to right. Let's start with 3 plus 8 is 11. 11 minus 4 is 7. So 7 is the correct answer. The correct answer, when we follow our order of operations, when we follow PEMDAS, the correct answer is 7. So you might be thinking, PEMDAS, that's kind of weird. How can I remember that? How am I ever going to remember that? So luckily, we have some mnemonics, some acronyms that we can use to help us remember. The most famous is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Let's go ahead and read that together. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You can see here, they're P-E-M-D-A-S, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Another way to remember is ponies eat more daisies after sunset. Again, let's read this together. Ponies eat more daisies after sunset. This is, again, our parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. At this point, I would probably pause and let the students come up with their own. We can brainstorm together, maybe take one or two minutes and see if we can come up with a different one, one of our own, or if we just want to settle on one of these two. For now, I'm going to settle on Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally and explain that that's the most famous one and the one that you'll see most likely in textbooks, online, things like that. So let's move on and let's do an example together as a class. So we have in parentheses 3 plus 4 times 2 squared minus 2 is what? The first step is what? Following PEMDAS, our first step is parentheses. So inside our parentheses is 3 plus 4. So that is what we are going to do first. So we have 3 plus 4 is 7 times 2 squared minus 2. The next step is what? Exponents. So we have our exponent here, 2 squared, 2 to the second power, which is basically 2 times 2. So let's go ahead and substitute that in. 7 times 4 minus 2. Now we have multiplication and division. Again, we'll do multiplication and division from left to right. So multiplication first comes first. 7 times 4 is 28. And then finally, all we have left is subtraction. 28 minus 2 is 26. So our answer for this problem is 26. You can see we followed PEMDAS. We did parentheses exponents, multiplication, and division, then finally addition and subtraction. 
it is at this point that I would go ahead and put these practice problems on the board, ask students to get out a separate sheet of paper, and start trying to solve these problems either in pairs or by themselves. I would walk around the classroom, I would encourage them, give them help where they need it, make sure everybody's on the same track, everybody's in the same grouping, everybody knows what's going on, and if necessary, go ahead and work through one or two of these problems on the board. That would be my check for understanding. I would definitely collect those papers with these three practice problems at the end of class and just make sure that everybody is on the same page and seems to be grasping the lesson. So that was my demonstration lesson. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, of course, please feel free to reach out to me and I look forward to continuing our partnership.